So Beethoven has established a pattern based on the, the first chord being F minor. And he just continues that pattern in the next phrase, measures three and four, built off of a different chord. This chord, C7. And that's how he got this. Right? So he just sequenced loosely, he sequenced the first phrase he created by breaking the F minor chord and just applied it to the C7 chord. If he was being more literal with the sequencing, that B flat probably would have been on the bottom or in the middle as opposed to being on top. But just try to keep the idea of sequencing being, um, he's taking this chord and he's breaking it in an ascending movement and then stepping down at the end. And that's exactly what he does in the C7. The intervals may not match up, but the idea of taking this broken chord, moving up with it, stepping down at the end, and then taking this broken chord, moving up with it and stepping down at the end is essentially a sequence in spirit, all right? So while it may not cut and paste the intervals exactly like a hand in wood or a technique would, uh, it's still a sequence and see it as such. So if the chord was not C7, uh, you still would have done the same thing. Like if it was the four chord, you might have gotten this, right? So if I was playing a B flat minor, I just sequenced B flat minor in measures three and four instead of C7. Or if you went to the two chord, right? So there's your uh, G diminished chord instead of C7. But either one is a sequence of the first two measures or Beethoven's first phrase. So the idea is not, you know, what are the exact notes, but take a step back, what's the big picture? What's the point? It's just a broken chord that moves in a specific way and it uses chord tones the whole time. So measures five and six are more or less just a truncated version of the first two phrases. Measure five is uh, measure two. You just get and measure six is measure four. Measure seven and eight are just basically a conclusion to the phrase where you have this as your main idea and uh, non-chord tones and you know notes found in the scale to make it more interesting. So another thing about this last phrase or the last two bars of this phrase is that it's really not something Beethoven wrote as much as it is just uh, another part of the classical vernacular that he's using again and again and again, uh, or that has been used again and again and again, and he's just incorporating it into his sonata right here, much like a 2-5-1 in jazz or uh, a 12-bar blues, formatically is the same thing all the time. What may change is the key or the melody written on top of it, but a 12-bar blues is a 12-bar blues and it gets used over and over again. Um, a 2-5-1 is a 2-5-1 and it gets used over and over again. Just like saying, uh, see you later to a friend is how you end a conversation. So those eight bars that we've been looking at, harmonically and melodically, and all the elements involved with the first eight bars, makes up basically theme A of our sonata. So what we're going to do, and throughout the series what we're going to do, is create, in this case, our own theme A using nothing but the elements we talked about. And as we analyze each section of the piece, we're going to rewrite in our own voice, our own way, using nothing more than the elements analyzed. If you do come up with something, please feel free to send it to us, we'll review it, we'll give you some feedback as to what we think about what you did, what was good, what, what we might have changed. or or whatever. So please, if, if you feel so inclined to do so, we, we encourage you. Uh, as, as involved as you can get in the process, the better off you are. And we are, uh, to be honest with you, in the long run. So stick around for the next section. Uh, thanks for watching.